Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we are here gathering together in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. The first day, the first Sunday, 2016, to worship our Father God in heaven, in spirit and in truth, Lord. Lord, open your, open your heaven, Lord. Please send us the wisdom and understanding. And also spirit of love and spirit of power and spirit of sound mind unto us so that we may be able to be sound in the face of Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Holy Spirit, know all of us so that we may be able to rejoice in the kingdom of God, righteousness and peace and in joy. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Okay, folks, you know, um, before we hear the sermon, yeah, let me read for Psalm chapter 133. It is called the Song of Decree of David. You know, that means when people of Israel gather together to Jerusalem, when their king, Jesus Christ, sitting at the throne of David, they gather together. Only remnant of Israel, they repented. They repent their sin against God that how much their life shall be. It's only three verses, okay, you can read. Let me read for you. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that ran down to the scarf of his garments, as the dew of Harmon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, give a life forevermore. Yes, nobody die, nobody shall be cursed, okay? Then evermore, you know, blessing of eternal life shall be. Not only for the Jew, but also the Church of God, the born again Christian, the bride of Jesus Christ, shall be blessed with eternal life. Okay. The main passage of sermon today, First John chapter four, uh, verse seven through twenty-one. First John. Yeah, let me read it for you. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And every one that love is is born of God and knows God. He that love is not knows not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because the God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. To love, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that dwell in him, and he in us, because he hath given us of his spirit. And we have sinned, and to testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, 
God dwelleth in him, and he in God. And we have known and beloved, believed the love that God has to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. And there is no fear in love, a perfect love casts out fear, because fear has torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God, and hated his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he hath seen, how can he love God, whom he hath not seen? And this commandment hath we from him, that he who loveth God love his brother also. Yeah, Apostle John, okay, he is talking about the fruits of the true children who are born of God. Yeah, John was especially beloved by Jesus, and he even called himself as the beloved disciple. He testified of the children of God born of him, that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ and received him. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Yes, born again Christian is born of God. That's why, you know, they can call, we can call God as a father, Abba, Abba. What a wonderful blessing it is, right? Yeah, in the main passage, he testifies of the true children of God who are born of God. He testifies of fruit of them. He also testifies of them that are not the true children of God very clearly. We have to watch, you know, two kinds of Christian. Real Christian, true Christian and Christian. Okay? Behold, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth and knows not God, for God is love. In this words, manifestly the love of God toward us, because the God sent his only begotten Son into the world that we might live through him. Herein is love, and not that we loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. To love, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. And he continues to testify, saying, If we love one another, God dwells in us, and his love perfected in us. Hereby know that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit, that is the Holy Ghost. And when we dwell in his love, our love made perfect, and that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. And they that dwell in his perfect love dwell in peace without fear. For the love of God casts out fear. Yeah, the, the word love, okay, that John is talking about is different from love between, you know, men and women. And also love between, you know, parents and children. Nor between Friends, the, the, the love he's talking about is the love of God. Love of God means what? Died for our sins to be propitiation. 
offering. Okay, so these days people, you know, use the words love and love and love. But love of God is totally different from you know, man's love, okay? We must, you know, uh, understand and we must be very careful to understand the love of God, what that is. You know, Jesus spoke of the way to discern between man of God and one of the devil. That is the religious leaders that had not believed in him at the time of Jesus. Beware of false prophets which come to you in ship's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. You shall love them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs from or of thistles? Even so, every good tree brings forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree brings forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit? Every tree that brings not forth good fruit is chewed down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruits you shall love them. Yeah, Apostle John wrote the letter unto the Galatians to testify of the fruits of them born of God as well as them that are not born of God. You know, that means in between the fruits, you know, uh, of difference between a uh, born again Christian and the carnal Christian. And now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, Emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revilings, such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit in the kingdom of God. But they cannot go to heaven. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affection. And he testified of them, of the charity. The charity is love of God. A different words, okay? Charity is love of God. And also of them without it. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling chime ball. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountain and have not charity I am nothing and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be bond and have not charity it profits me nothing without love of God nothing In other words, man is able to show himself as a faithful son of God before the eyes of man, even though he is not born of God, to be the true son of God. But if no love of God in him, in other words, no spirit of God, that is Holy Spirit, dwells in him, he profits nothing. He has testified of the things that are the hypocritical behaviors to show all kinds of false love. He continued to testify of the fruits of them that have the love of God. Charity, that means love of God, right? Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity 
Avant is not itself, is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly, seek is not her own, is not easily provoked. I think is no evil, rejoice not in iniquity, but rejoice in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopeth all things, endures all things. Yeah. That are that are the children of God, through receiving his spirit, manifest the characters of God from within. Jesus testified of the fruit of the children of God through the parable of vine tree. He just, you know, spoke to his disciples just before he was arrested to die for us. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can you, except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abides in me, and I in him, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. You know, if we suffer long for other people, other Christians, it brings forth no profit for us. Yes, always loss. But rather much loss for us at the end. In the same manner, if we do friendly for others without any condition always, it will be the same result for us. If we believe all things, bearing all things, we could be taken advantage by others. You know, other people make a use of it, right? To take their benefit. And if we seek not our own, much loss could come back to us. For the last thousand years, the Lord God has been suffered long for the people of Israel and the children of God, and also for the Gentiles. He has been friendly for them always. Pastor John testified, God so loved the world. God is still suffering long, believing and waiting for them to believe in Him someday in the future. God is still waiting for the sinners believing them to repent. And he seems to be taken advantage by them in the world. God has been taken advantage by us when we have been sinning not caring of God. The sinners like us have been blessed to be saved because God has been suffered long for us, delivering us to the end. At this moment, in a time receiving a new year, we'd better examine ourselves once again. How the love of God within us has been manifested. How long have we suffered for others around us, praying for them to believe in God? How have we been suffered long for the brothers and sisters with us to consist of the body of Christ, this church. And whether we are still suffering long for them that left this church, listening the voice of the Holy Ghost in this moment. Let this time be the blessing through true repentance in the first time of worship in the new year. Apostle Peter testified of God that have been suffered long, believing the wicked world to repent. Coming back to him. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. That one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise. As some man counts slackness, but it's long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes. 
God has been, Jesus Christ has been suffering long enough for 2,000 years already after he died on the cross. He's just, you know, considered 2,000 years as a two days. What a wonderful love of God. Who so have as the Holy Spirit within this kind of character manifested. He's a man of God. Okay? Yeah. If the love of God is within us, we have to pray for the fullness of it. Apostle Paul encouraged the saints of Ephesians. Wherefore, he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Even though you're born again of the Holy Spirit, we have to pray for the fullness of the Holy Spirit. It is a command. God is commanding to be filled with the Holy Spirit through the prayer, okay? And also live godly. That's the way. Then the love of God shall be manifested from us, inside of us, okay? Then also yeah, we can, as Jesus, as God, we can long suffering for others. We can bear all things, believe all things, hopes all things, endures all things because of Lord Jesus Christ. Even though somebody else, you know, want to take advantage from us, giving us a loss, taking benefit from them, it's fine. Obeying the love of God, the love of God will keep us in his love. As Jesus has done in the world, he did that, right? He long suffered. He believed. He bared, you know. He hoped, endured all things for us. Even myself, you know, God has been long suffering 20 years. You know, since I went to college, I left the church, but God still believed in me, he bailed in me. He never forsake the hope in me. That's right. That's why we have to do the same thing. But then that's the way, you know, the people come to the love of God. The seeing the fruits they bear by us, born by us. It is a real Christian. I bless all of you to be real, true children of God, but born of God. He's calling the God in heaven as our Father. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us the precious message today in the first week of the new year, Lord. Engrave all this message unto us so we may be able to follow Jesus Christ, denying ourselves, taking a cross. The way to take a cross is to bear all kind of things for others, Lord, and to have real joy in the Lord. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ, amen.